In this video I'm going to show you how you can texture your spaceship or cipher building inside of Blender without having to use third-party software such as Substance Painter. So you might think well I'm going to look for metal textures or metal paneling textures because spaceships and cipher buildings they are probably out of metal. But it's really hard to find some large-scale metal textures that really fit this sci-fi aesthetic. So I experimented with using concrete textures because a lot of concrete textures have already this kind of leaking, rust and other cool details inside of them which helps to really give our model some interesting texture. So I have this Veneta class Star Destroyer I made a while back inside of Blender so I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to start by adding in a new material and calling it something like Spaceship. Then in the shader editor I'm going to add in an image texture node and connect the color output to the base color input of the principled BSDF. I'm then also going to add in a UV map node which lets me decide which UV map to use. So I'm going to select the default UV map. I'm then pressing open to load in my first base texture. I'm using this concrete texture as my base. You might think well this does not look too sci-fi for me and I would agree with you but somehow this really works on, on such big spaceships and sci-fi models. So stay with me. As you can see it's very detailed and has a lot of leaking and other cool color variations in it. So currently it looks somewhat wrong because if you select the model we see the UVs are really messed up. So to change that let's press U and select Cube Projection. Now already this looks a lot better so let's select our UVs and scale it up a bit. Depending on how large your model is you can of course scale it differently. Let's also rotate it so that the texture aligns with the model itself. A good idea here is to separate your model into different parts so that unwrapping it is a lot easier. And already this looks quite promising. Let's go to rendered mode to see how this looks. Really nice. But as you can see, the reflection and the overall specular highlights make it look a bit wrong and unrealistic. So we are going to change that. First, let's darken the environment. Just make sure that scene lights and scene world is enabled there. And let's add in a sunlight. Let's go to the light settings and set it to something high like 12. Let's also rotate it to give it some interesting angle. Like this maybe. This already looks quite nice. But if we rotate the camera a bit we still have these big highlights there that make the model look a bit unrealistic. So to fix that let's go into our shader editor and let's increase the roughness which helps a bit but if we decrease the IRR levels in the specular settings you can see we get a lot more of our texture visible. We want to have some sort of mix between these so let's take the texture into a color ramp and plug this into the IOR level input. Let's preview this and let's make sure that we have a lot of black in there. Like this. Currently this is a bit too contrasty so I'm going to change the brightest point a bit. Like so. Of course you don't have to copy these exact settings but change it to something that works for your model. Let's then add in an ambient occlusion node right before the base color and let's set the distance to something like 3. 
just make sure you are you're using cycles otherwise this won't be visible and as you can see this adds some darkness to all the creases and corners to add this shader to all the other parts of the spaceship let's select all these parts and our piece with the shader as the last one and then press ctrl l link material now we also need to add in the uvs so just use the q projection again and then just rotate it so that the texture matches the model. Then you can do this for all the other parts. Let's also take this here and let's press U, Q, projection. Again, scale it up, rotate it to match the model in its direction. As you can see, we have parts of the, this model here that don't fit the, the rest of the model. So I'm going to select this part. Adjust the UVs for that separately. Depending on how close you see the model, you don't need to go too much into detail, but for this I want to release it close up, so I really want to make sure the texture is flowing in the right directions. As you can see here, I have a lot of details in the paneling, which aren't that visible if we have this overall texture um, across the whole model. So to change that, let's first make some space in the shader editor. Then let's add in a new UV map and let's copy the UV map node and select the new UV map. And let's also copy the image texture node, plug the UV map into this texture node and let's select a new texture. I'm gonna go with this interesting sci-fi looking texture. So it's not too important what the details are on this texture. It's just important that, that we have some squares with different shades of gray. You can download these textures I'm using, including this model here, this spaceship model in the description for free on Patreon if you become a free Patreon member. So currently we are using the old UV map, so let's select everything, press U, Smart UV, Project, like this. Then let's add in a mapping node. And let's decrease the scale to something like 0.3. And as you can see, this way we are giving each panel a different shade of gray. So let's add in a mix color node, set it to multiply and plug this into the B slot. Now we can multiply this on top to really bring out these panels. We don't want it to be too strong, like just some small values are fine here. Let's duplicate the base image texture node and let's choose a different concrete texture. I'm going to use something that doesn't have too much contrast. Let's duplicate a UV map node and also this mapping node. And let's add in a mix color node again. And let's just mix both of these textures together. What I want is to decrease the contrast of the first texture I'm using. So I'm just going to mix an, a different one in. Here you can really decide how much details you want in your 
Spaceship textures. I'm also going to increase the scaling of this second texture. This looks quite nice already. Again, we can always experiment with different settings to get a different result. Let's make some space here. Let's duplicate this multiply node and let's add in a new UV map. Let's also copy this UV map node and image texture node. And let's choose a different texture. Basically what I want to do is just add in a different kind of detail to this. Especially if you want to add more weathering, we want to make this spaceship look older and stuff like that, you can just multiply in a different texture, like this for example. Let's plug this into the B slot and let's select our new UV map here. And make sure you press U and Q project again. Let's again scale this up. This looks nice, but it really darkens the rest of the textures. So let's increase the brightness of this texture which which will hopefully not darken the rest as much Can, if you are not happy with, with the overall look, you can then of course just try out different textures like this one for example, which gives it a different look. Currently the rest of the model is a lot darker and that is because they don't have the necessary UV maps. So let's create these. The second one was uh, the Smart UV project, and the third one again was the Q projection. And then we can just go into all these other parts of the model and give it the necessary UVs. If you want parts of your model to be colored in a specific color, like for this ship, for example, we need um, parts of the hangar door here are colored in red. So let's make a different copy of our shader and let's give it a different name. And let's select the parts we want this color to be and let's assign this. Then we can add in a multiply node and just give it some interesting color. In my case it's some sort of red. Just make sure it's not too saturated because this will look unrealistic very quickly. So that's basically it. This is how I did all the textures. So this is the final model. Again, you can download this together with the textures I used in the video description if you become a free member on my Patreon.